Well played. Oh, why do douchebags like this so much? Oh, hello. I didn't see you guys there. I was just getting lit and enjoying one of my favorite stories from the world of ice and fire. world of ice and fire, history tends to repeat itself. And for some of the great houses, such as House Stark, this isn't always a good thing. So today I'm going to tell a story that might not be as well known by some of the casual viewers, but it's personally one of my favorites. And this story does involve a talented musician and warrior who kidnaps a daughter of a lord of House Stark. Sound familiar? Well, we're not talking about Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. We are talking about a royal member, though, but not a royal member that's claiming the Iron Throne. A king beyond the wall. Yes, another king beyond the wall. We're talking about a free folk legend, Bale the Bard. Now, Bale is said to be the one who outwitted the Starks. I know, shocking, right? The Starks being outwitted. But also, Bale is said to be the reason that the Starks could very well be derived from bastards. So who was Bale the Bard? Well, first off, this is a free folk legend, and the tale kind of differs from the source. The free folk tell it a little bit differently, obviously, and the Northmen, obviously, tell it a lot differently. Now, this has a lot to do with not only Bale supposedly being one of the greatest raiders ever to live, but also a talented bard, a musician, a storyteller, who sang songs about his own adventures in his own lifetime. Pretty clever, if you ask me. You could say that Bale was a little bit ahead of his time as far as PR goes. Now, those south of the wall would consider this more fake news. Now, in A Clash of Kings, Egret actually tells this story to John. Now, John has heard this story. Now, of course, John, being a bastard from south of the wall, particularly does not enjoy this story. And he quickly lets Egret know that this is not the same story that he heard growing up. John says, your bail is a liar. Egret replies, no, but a bard's truth is different than yours or mine. So what is a bard's truth? Well, according to free folk legend, Lord Brandon Stark, the Liege of the North, once called Bale a coward. So Bale, feeling that his honor has been insulted, scales the wall, takes to the king's road, enters Winterfell under the guise of a singer named Sigrid Obscagos, which in the old language of Skagos actually means deceiver. Bale is said to have put on a beautiful performance until midnight. So at this point, Lord Brandon Stark is so impressed by this performance that Bale puts on that he asks the bard what he wants as a reward. Bale replies with, he only wants one thing. The most beautiful flower in Winterfell's garden. So at this particular time, the blue winter rose was blooming in the gardens. So Lord Brandon Stark accepts the offer. Lord Brandon wakes up the next morning and goes to check on his only daughter. His only daughter and virgin daughter. But when Lord Brandon checks in on his only virgin daughter in her bed, she is not there. In her stead is a blue winter rose. So Lord Brandon sends out members of the Night's Watch to search for his daughter, but they never find her. So time goes by and the Stark line is actually in danger of extinction. And one day, Lord Brandon Stark finds his beautiful, no longer a virgin, daughter back in her room holding an infant. In fact, her and Bale never left Winterfell. They were down in the crypts, the crypts that we talked about in the last video that you should check out if you haven't watched. Lord Stark's daughter gave birth to Bale's son, a bastard, who later becomes the Lord of House Stark. Thirty years now passes. Bale's son, presumed son, is Lord Winterfell. Bale is now keen beyond the wall. He leads a wildling army south. And at a battle at the Frozen Ford, Bale supposedly meets the Lord of Winterfell, his son. Now Bale is overrun with emotion and unable to slay his own son in battle. But the Lord of Winterfell, Bale's son, has no such qualms and slays his father in battle. He then brings back his father, the king beyond the wall's head, as a trophy. His mother, upon seeing the man she once loved, the bard, Sigrid from Skagos, who she spent so many months with and loved, overcome with grief, she throws herself from one of Winterfell's tall towers 
and ends her life. As for Bale's son, it is said in later years that he is flayed and killed by the Boltons. So what do I like about this story? It's kind of dim, I'll admit that. But it's got so many of the aspects of the story that we currently are seeing play out right in front of our eyes. And I love the theory that there's only really seven stories in our world. And we just find different ways to tell them. And this is kind of a prime example of that. The Boltons are rebelling against the Starks. The Wildlings are looking for some way to better themselves or at least deface the Starks in any way to, to put some shame on their noble line, to cast some doubt, to show that they're not any different than those south of the Wall. Like Tyrion Lannister said, the only difference between those beyond the Wall and those south of the Wall is his ancestors were on the right side of the Wall when it went up. We have a musician slash warrior who steals a Stark daughter, supposedly. We have a bastard come to power. We have the grief of a mother. History repeats itself in the world of ice and fire and in our own world. Sometimes we learn, sometimes we don't. Sadly, most of the time we don't. And that might be the reason that we're telling the same seven stories time and time again. But hey, George does tell one hell of a story. We'll see you guys next time. Justin Thomas here, and if you enjoyed that video, why don't you check out some of the videos right here? Possibly right here, but make sure to subscribe right here, and we'll see you guys soon.